This story has been in the headlines all around the world for the past week. The man captured in the graphic viral video stabbing and slashing him to death. And the response from the community, the response from everyone after it happened, it was, it was so tremendous. Puts a lot of faith in the community to help them work with police. The flurry of tips that were coming in from the internet, from calls in person. We had that great video and we put it out on social media. I've had over a quarter of a million views of it. What happened almost a year ago right where I'm standing changed the Belmont community. Carmen Grant shows us how East 183rd Street and Bathgate Avenue will forever belong to Junior. June 20th. Almost going to be a year that he's not here. It's hard. And we're standing on hollowed ground. I feel like we shouldn't have it up, like we should have him here. So that his story is never forgotten. Junior's memory lives on in murals outside grocery stores, businesses, and throughout the Belmont community. My son is not here with me, but I feel he's in my heart for life. Could have been your son, could have been my son, it could have been anybody's son. I think it's something that needed to happen. I think it brings good light and always keep us in memory and everybody else who comes to these streets. Our voice is heard, Junior's voice heard. Junior! Has it become a national rallying cry? It brought a lot of kids in the community closer. You can see the people, the love now. Love is here. It serves as a reminder that we have an obligation to do everything we can to break the cycle of violence. We want the neighborhood to be safe because we do have kids. It ain't even about us no more. What was tragic about Junior's death was not only his youth, but his innocence. We let one mistake happen once, let's not let it happen again. Because of Junior, because of his legacy, all of us are aware of the problem of gang violence in our neighborhood. We should have murals up in the neighborhood, even though he wasn't the only person that passed away over here. He brought everybody together. It's sad that it happened to him, and I'm sad. Every day I wake up and say the same thing. I wish he was here. I just, you know, I pray for his family. I pray for his mother. Her son's story will forever be part of the history of the Bronx. At the center of all of this, the bodega Junior was dragged out of. Calls to shut it down. Questions on whether workers inside that night did enough to save him. Amanda Bosser looks into how this tragedy transformed typical neighborhood bodegas. They could close the door as soon as he seen he. I feel scared at the moment. They will kill us. He didn't help that kid. He handed that kid to them guys. He tried to help that boy, and he's a victim himself. He was caught by surprise, and his first reaction was to take the trouble outside. I feel like that store should be closed down. When someone runs into your bodega, they could run in to rob you, to kill you, or they could run in there to seek safe haven. I was, you know, so scared because it was in the bodega. I was very afraid. A mindset shared by many who own bodegas in the wake of Junior's murder. A fear of being put in the same position as the employees at Cruz and Chicky Grocery, seen in the now viral video and the backlash that ensued. But what? Forcing the owner of the Belmont Bodega at the center of the crime, Modesto Cruz, to defend his actions in the days after the attack. It was too many young kids for only two people. When months went by without an end to the criticism, Cruz appeared to hand over the keys of his shop to a seemingly new owner. And I was thinking about what could happen in my bodega. Hundreds of people that go in your bodega, some of them go in to steal, some of them go in to buy a cup of coffee, some of them go in to rob you, some of them go in to assault you, some of them go in to kill you. And you have to deal with all of that every day. Junior's death or murder was something that impacted every bodega owner. 
In some cases, it encouraged them to act when similar situations unfolded. Edward Lara hailed a hero when he fought back against a group of men who chased a teenager into his Bronx shop. Surveillance video shows him standing guard, broomstick in hand, keeping the attackers from their victim. Vincent Milan grabbed a bike seat to defend a teen who sought shelter at his Brooklyn store. The assault leaving him scarred physically and emotionally. Convincing leaders within the bodega community, it was time for change. We want to make sure that it doesn't happen again, so we're doing something about it. With the safety of customers and employees alike in mind, leaders of the United Bodegas of America met with NYPD officers to learn how to avoid tragedy from striking at their stores. The improvements recommended by police include the installation of panic buttons, warning lights, magnetic locks, shatterproof glass, and cameras that can be monitored by law enforcement. Altogether, this security system overhaul created what is known as a safe haven bodega. If safe haven stores existed back then, maybe Junior would be alive today. Understandable then why the first safe haven bodega was here at the one from which Junior was dragged to his death. The upgraded safety measures showcased at this store this past January. Technology that would typically cost about $3,000 for store owners out of pocket. In this case, all donated to the shop now known as Yayi's Deli and Grocery. To us, it doesn't matter who owns the bodega. It's making sure that that bodega owner is socially responsible. To date, 10 bodegas are slated to become safe havens. So far, four stores have the safety upgrades installed. Most recently, the improvements were implemented at one of Radhamez Rodriguez's shops in the Bronx, Pamela's Green Deli. It's gonna be safe for the community. We wanna make sure that what happened to Junior does not happen again. We, as a community, need to take responsibility of what happened here. Junior was a bright, talented, smart kid that tragically had his life taken away, and we're going to stand here to be his voice. Who wanted to stop? You know, we can't continue to have people burying their children. What the community did after June 20th made a difference. We are the ones that need to make sure that we can protect the community that we serve. It birthed change. He's become such an important part of the story of the Bronx. It brought people together. We should have him here, but at least we have something to remember him by. The Justice for Junior movement went beyond Belmont, farther than the Bronx. We have to progress forward. You know, just, just trying to remember what we did in the past to keep him alive, that's the greatest thing. Coming up next week, tengo todo fresquecito en la mente. No se me ha calmado, aunque haya, aunque haya pasado un año. Lo sigo teniendo igualito ahí. News 12's Amy Rodriguez spends time with Junior's family, showing us how they have been coping over the last 12 months. No time has passed for me. I feel like I'm still in the same day, missing my son, waiting for my son to come. And I feel like something's gonna, something gonna happen soon. Opening up sharing intimate memories about the 15-year-old boy who captured the world's attention. He was just always laughing. There was never a dull moment with him. He was always laughing, he was always smiling, always happy. Tune in next Thursday for Justice for Junior, Losing Lissandra.